invite you all to take a trip with me uh, to a land far, far away, to the Holy Land, and to the time of, the Jesu of Jesus' uh, life there in the Holy Land, and to today's gospel, the narrative we just heard. Jesus walks into town, and everyone expects the great teacher with anticipation. Everyone had heard that Jesus could heal, and maybe they even believed that he could heal this man who was deaf, who could barely speak. So they asked the Lord to lay hands on him. That's kind of like the ancient equivalent to the Facebook post saying that so-and-so is in the hospital for such-and-such, and please say a prayer, that sort of thing. It's a polite and mannerly thing to do if we're Catholic, you know, to ask for prayers for one another. Well, the Lord hears the request. He could have laid hands on the fellow right in front of everyone else, but instead he takes him off to the side. And you can imagine everyone's curiosity. What was he about to do? Imagine as they craned their necks around the tall people standing in front to try to see what the Lord was doing over there in that corner and why he had taken this man off to the side. And then imagine their uh, shock and perhaps embarrassment as the Lord, instead of in a dignified, polite manner, laying his hands on the man's head, takes him by the head, sticks his fingers in his ears, and then spits on his hand, how gross, and then worse, sticks his hand into the poor fellow's mouth, looking up to heaven and then groaning. What is all of this about? Did the people get what they wanted? Well, it's hard to know what every single individual person in the crowd wanted when they asked the Lord to, to lay hands on this poor fellow. But I think it's fair to assume that in some ways they got more than they wanted, more than they were asking for anyway. I think if these folks were like a lot of people that I have met, they wanted some prayers to be said, and they wanted to feel better afterwards. They wanted what we call, in a beautiful phrase, the consolations of religion. It's such a nice phrase, all those polysyllabic Latinate root words, you know. It has such a n wonderful ring to it, like water over rocks, you know, the consolations of religion. And today we seek that, uh, you know, by asking loved ones to pray for us or pray for others. We, uh, we seek it by, you know, even those who haven't darkened the door of a church in, in decades might ask uh, th for someone to come, for a priest to come and anoint their loved one uh, when they're in the hospital. And in fact, many come to Mass on a weekly basis seeking just that, the, the consolations of religion. In fact, all of these things are kind of the baseline Catholic things to do. They're how we become, uh, you know, decent, respectable Catholics. But if all we would like is decency and respectability, after all, the Episcopal Church down the road will do just fine. They have a worship service that is, you know, quite as nice as ours, no doubt. I've never been, but I'm, I'm sure it's, it's very nice. And uh, they have what they think is the Eucharist. You know, they uh, talk about it as a beautiful symbol of bread and wine. In fact, if we're just after decency and respectability, the kind of surface-level practice of the faith, their church will do all right. The Catholic Church isn't for decent and respectable people. The Catholic Church is for sinners and for saints. And that is how the Lord wants to meet each of us, as a sinner in need of healing, as someone on the way to becoming a saint. Because every church claims to worship God and claims to make its members decent and respectable. But the Catholic Church claims far more. It claims the ability to genuinely heal to heal not just the body, not just the eyes, the ears, and the mouth, but in fact, the heart, the most broken member of each of our bodies. You see, in the, the Catholic Church, we surpass all of the bounds of decency and respectability. We don't talk about the Eucharist as a beautiful symbol. We talk about the Eucharist as the flesh and the blood of Christ, which daily, weekly, we receive, we eat. If there's anything more disgusting than a man spitting in your mouth, it might be eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And yet that is what we'll do, each of us here who go to communion at Mass today. Perhaps even worse, we have a little room back here. It's full of statues, and it's worth visiting, if, even if you were only to see the statues. But we use it for another purpose, other than kind of spectating uh, our saintly statues and the crucifix in there. We also use it for hearing confessions. And it may have been a while since you've kind of meandered back that way. Uh, 
I have sat in the room sometimes, and I often get a lot of reading done uh, between folks who are coming to confession, and it's a great time for me to get my reading done, but that's not why I'm sitting there. I'm sure that you all uh, go to confession when the other priests are in that room. Uh, you know, you would rather confess to, to Father Mike or to Father Rob, uh, and I understand that. The lines are probably out the door then, uh, but they're, they're not out the door when I happen to be there. And I think that's because we're happy settling at the level of the decent and the respectable. You know, we tell the Lord we're sorry for our sins, you know, in the surely rare case that we might offend him. But in reality, the Lord wants far more than decency and respectability. Again, he wants to heal our heart. He invites us to do the indecent thing of speaking about those private matters of our life, about the dirtiest corners of our life, about our sins, about airing them before his mercy and receiving the healing of the heart that we all so desperately need and all of us, whether we admit it or not, so desperately desire. I think these words from the book of Revelation addressed to a church almost 2,000 years ago could be addressed to us. I know your works. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything, and yet do not realize that you are wretched pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Those whom I love, I reprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Each of us, myself included, needs to hear these words. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Let the Lord take you by the hand or take you by the head if necessary, and do whatever he wills, no matter how intrusive that might be. It might be far more than you're asking for. You might be shooting for healing on the surface, but the Lord wants to heal you within. And I think there are two ways that we can go about this. Uh, I've mentioned uh, both of them, uh, the Holy Eucharist and the confessional. In the confessional, we air our sins before God and receive healing and forgiveness where we need it most. And in the Holy Eucharist, especially in silent adoration, when we have time to hear the Lord's voice uh, we can perceive what he desires to tell us uh, and receive the, the healing in our hearts that we need. Every uh, Tuesday, either here or at St. Joseph, you'll see the times in the bulletin, we have adoration uh, where you can spend a time in silence before the Lord exposed on the altar and there venerate him in his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. That's a beautiful thing. And there the Lord can reach into our heart and heal what he desires to heal. So those two things, I believe, the veneration of the Holy Eucharist, adoration, and, and confession uh, will allow the Lord to give us the healing that he so desires. And I encourage you to let the Lord, uh, in one way or another, uh, take you by the head, look to heaven, and groan. And when he does so, his desire, his heart, which is so thirsting to satisfy yours, to heal yours, will be satisfied by bringing you the healing that you need. And having done so, like those in the gospel today, we can praise him, for truly he has done all things well. <laughs>